Okay, so this is called The Sad Story of Methodist Founder um, John Wesley's Marriage. And it was written by Christian Today staff writer. It was written on the 24th of May. So the 24th of May is significant, and I'm going to be reading it from that standpoint as if today, you know, and uh, go from there, and it'll self it'll explain the date, and, and why they wrote it for that date. So, here it goes. Today, May twenty fourth, marks the day of an Anglican priest named John Wesley. He had an ex a spiritual experience that changed his life, and arguably transformed the church. It's a truly heartwarming day that celebrates the power of conversion, and Wesley's fervent Methodist legacy. But many people don't know a more somber side of Wesley's life, his tense and allegedly violent relationship with his wife. Today is also known as Aldersgate Day, named after the part of London where Wesley had a strange spiritual experience. An Anglican minister, Wesley was a fervent priest but had increasingly been overcome by melancholy and doubt. On the morning of May 24, 1738, he opened his Bible to read the words, There are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, even that ye should be partakers of the divine nature. Later that day he attended a church service in Aldersgate, where he heard a a reading from Reformer Martin Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. Then in Wesley's words, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, and Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Inspired with assurance, John went on with his brother Charles to pioneer the radical movement of, the, of Methodism, spreading evangelical and evangelical revival across the country and the world. But John's fervent faith also caused profound problems for his marriage in later life. He is believed to have suffered domestic abuse from his wife. Wesley's marriage to Molly in 1751 didn't begin as a romance and had filled his brother Charles Wesley with dread. The dread was appropriate because in just a few weeks the, couples would be lo the couple would be locked into a tense conflict. Wesley was increasingly distant from his wife due to his preaching itinerary, while Molly wrongly suspected, wrongly suspected infidelity and struggled with Wesley's frequent correspondence with other women. Since she was left at home for weeks at a time but was allowed to open Wesley's post, she saw letters from many of her husband's admirers. She grew antagonistic to Wesley and wrote critical letters and spied on him, accused him of adultery, and gave Wesley's enemies material with which to slander him. Wesley wasn't particularly charitable either, and once sent an unflinching me message demanding Molly to be content and submit. Know me and know yourself. Suspect me no more. Provoke me no more. Do not any longer contend for mastery. Be content to be private, a private, insignificant person, known and loved by God and me. <clears throat> content she did not become. John Hampson of Manchester wrote that he once entered a room unannounced and found Molly dragging her husband across the floor by his hair. But John could be violent with her with his words, once writing, If you were buried just now, or if you had 
never lived, what loss would it be to the cause of God? What loss would it be to the cause of God? After years of conflict, Molly eventually left her husband and didn't return in 1771. Wesley famously wrote in his journal, in his only comment on his marriage, I did not forsake her. I did not dismiss her. I did not recall her. It's a sad story that shows neither of the couple. Let me read this part again. It's a, it's a sad story that shows neither of the couple in a good light. It may be a shock that the preacher was the victim of domestic violence, but it might be argued that he was ambitious and unkind and hoping for a happy marriage and contented wife when he was never at home and perhaps temperamentally unsuited for the marriage anyway. Wesley's marriage is a reminder that even spiritual heroes are vulnerable to profound personal unhappiness. Marriage is a serious matter, and as the liturgy, liturgy reminds us, is not to be taken lightly. That's an interesting thing for all of us who have struggled with marriage matters. Even heroes of the faith who wrote hymns that are so beautiful. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing praise to thee, O God. For our words that John Wesley would wrote. I mean, to think thoughts like that. To, to think that one tongue is not enough to praise God. He... He wanted to have a thousand of them to praise God, you know, but yet suffered in his marriage in that way. And uh, I think all of us have what Paul called with the demon. He prayed, he begged God three times, take it away from me. We don't really know what that was, but it was there to keep Paul humble. I think we all have this thing, whatever it be, it's there. It's there to keep us humble. But that's an interesting story, isn't it? God bless you. In Jesus' name.